Hi, this is Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and today we're going to continue learning about the TI-89 calculator and specifically we're going to learn how to factor uh, polynomials which is something that we learn how to do by hand in algebra but knowing how to use your calculator to do it is really really a, a fast time saver. So what you need to do is go up here into the algebra menu F2 under algebra we've been working with some of these uh, functions for quite a while now the second one here is called the factor function so as you might guess you're going to take it and stick it on the stack like that and what you need to do is type in some sort of polynomial so let's start small with something that I know you know how to factor what if you were trying to factor x squared uh, plus x minus 6 so if you wanted to factor that, I know that you could you could sort of write your parentheses down on paper and do it, you know, the uh, the manual way. But if you want to get your calculator to do it, you just stick it right inside of this factor function, hit enter, and it's going to spit out x minus two times x plus three, which is what you would get if you uh, did this by hand. Now you can always check to give it a sanity check and make sure you understand because these two things, when you multiply them together, should give you back what you started with. So x times x gives you x squared negative 2 times 3 gives you negative 6 the inside terms multiplied give you negative 2x the outside terms give you 3x and when you add those together you're going to get the x in the middle so the calculator is doing its job it's not a big surprise it should give you the right answer um, so this can help you out if you get stuck with a large one of these guys to factor uh, the, the calculator can help you uh, let me go ahead and clear it up and let's do another one let's go into the uh, guy here and we can go down and hit enter or we can just hit the number two because this is menu item number two we'll put it on the stack let's do one that's a little bit larger let's do x squared uh, plus 7x and when you write 7x it's better to go ahead and be clear and write 7 times x um, plus 10 let's do plus 10 and let's close the parentheses off hit enter and see what we get. x plus 2 times x plus 5, which is what we expect. x times x gives us x squared. 2 times 5 gives us 10. The inside terms is 2x and the outside terms are 5x, so those add to 7x. Now one more thing I'd like to point out is that when you have a, a, a polynomial of order 2 like here, uh, the highest power is x squared, you're going to expect to get two factors here multiplied together. If it were uh, the highest power was x cubed, you would expect to get three power, three terms multiplied by each other here. If it was x to the tenth being the largest power here, then you would expect to have ten factors multiplied together. That's just the way the algebra works out, so it's a good sanity check for you. Now let's go ahead and put something else on the stack, something a little more complicated, not too, too bad. You could still do this by hand. Let's do 6x squared uh, minus 19x, 19 times x, uh, minus 7. This is something, again, you could do by hand, but it's a little bit more complicated because the answer comes out to, instead of just x plus something, x minus something, here we have 2x minus 7, 3x plus 1 which makes total sense because 2x times 3x is going to give us the 6x squared. Uh, the 7 times 1 over here is going to give us the negative 7. The inside terms uh, and the outside terms when you add them together they're going to give you the negative 19x in the middle. Okay so up till now we've done things that we could really do by hand. Um, which it's a great check for yourself. It's really good when you're doing your homework to get that confidence to know you're right. But let's put something in there that is a little bit bigger than would be very easy to do by hand. So let's go ahead and put the factor guy here. Uh, and let's go ahead and do 2x cubed. So here we're doing a cube polynomial. Minus 21x squared plus 348x minus 169. Now it's not impossible, but that's really difficult to factor. Number one, it's a cubic, which makes it harder to factor. Um, number two, these very large coefficients everywhere it makes it really difficult. So let's go ahead and hit enter and see what we get. Calculator is going to think for a second, and it's going to give us something which at first glance doesn't seem to help us very much. Um, number one, it's a cubic polynomial, and we only have two terms here multiplied. So we expect to get three terms. So we're thinking maybe the calculator made a mistake or something. Um, actually what we have is 2x minus 1 which is one of the factors the other giant factor look it's it's another polynomial of order 2 
Uh, in other words, it's another quadratic function here. So it didn't fully factor everything, or it seems that it did not fully factor everything. What's going on here is remember back from your algebra. When you get into higher order polynomials like this, sometimes they can have real roots. This is called a real root here because if we set it equal to zero and solve for x, we can move the one over and divide by two and we'll get a real number for x. And sometimes you get uh, imaginary or, or complex answers which involve imaginary numbers. So what we have used up to this point is the factor function. This is going to only give us um, factors that are basically real, real numbers. And this is one of them. There's no imaginary i anywhere in this function into this little term, so it pulled it out for us. What was left over, this x squared guy here, it didn't really continue to factor it because, as we'll see in just a second here, the, 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 uh, the factors of this little quadratic guy here, they're not real factors. They're imaginary or they're complex factors. And so that basically is going to, because we only use the, the regular factor function and not the complex version, the calculator really doesn't attempt to give us any complex answers. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you use the factor function and you get something that doesn't look like it's fully factored, it probably means there's imaginary roots or imaginary factors running around there and you need to, to do something else to get to see those. So the calculator provides something to do that. If you go uh, down in the menu past this regular factor function, we've used this submenu before, if you go to the complex, in this little flyout menu, we've actually used the other ones, the C solve and the C zeros. These were giving the complex results. Well, there's also a complex factor. So if we do a, put this on the stack and type it in again, we should get the real and the complex or imaginary uh, uh, factors there. So let's go ahead and do that. So 2x cubed minus 21x squared plus 348x minus 169. And let's close it off. And we, the only difference between this and what we did before is that we used a different function. This is the real version, the factor function. This is the C factor, the complex factor. It thinks about it for a second, and look, we have something totally different. Here we have one factor, which is a complex factor, x plus negative 5 plus 12i. The negative 5 plus 12, 5, this is the negative 5 plus 12i. This is a complex number. Complex means real part of the number and imaginary part of the number. So this factor was not displayed up here because this is a complex number. It's only going to come out when we use the complex factor version. Uh, if we go up and scroll over, we'll see the second one, which is x minus the same complex number. They always occur in conjugate pairs, so that's why we have negative 5 plus 12i and then uh, the, the inverse of the, the negative of that, negative uh, 5i uh, plus 5 plus 12i. And then if we go on toward the end, we're going to see 2x minus 1, which is the same real factor that was provided in the previous uh, function when we, when we evaluated it with the regular old factor. So the factor function gave us the real factor plus some other thing that it couldn't really do anything else with because it knew that the answers were going to be complex. Basically, if you're in a more of a basic algebra class, the reason that they give you this factor function is so that the students that don't know what imaginary numbers are are not burdened with all of the complex numbers running around because it would be really confusing for them to see this if they didn't know what that was. But when you get up into more advanced algebra and certainly beyond in the trig and calculus, you're always going to be interested in the imaginary roots and the complex roots or factors of a polynomial. So my advice to you, really, if you're in anything above sort of basic algebra, if you know what an imaginary number is or a complex number just always use the C factor version there's really no reason not to that way you'll definitely see the real uh, factors and you'll also see all of the complex factors and that's really truly what the answers are you would really only use this if you're just looking for a quick answer if you really know you only care about the real factors or if you just don't even know what an imaginary number really is all right let me clear this stack out let me show you one more thing I want to illustrate this a little bit more. Let's do the regular old factor function and let's put in something simple. x cubed, or something that seems simple, minus x squared plus x plus 1. This looks like a pretty simple thing to factor. It's a cubic, but it looks pretty simple. So let me show you what happens if you enter something random like this. You hit enter, calculator thinks, and it, it looks like it doesn't do anything at all. It's giving us the same polynomial back that we started with. Okay, so what this means is that the calculator 
there's several things that it means, but but what what this very likely means is that there are some complex answers here that uh, it can't really display to us, and um, so we need to drill a little bit farther. And there's also some of the little twist I'm going to show you uh, as well here. So let's go ahead. I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you ever get that, then just immediately go back in. If you accidentally use that function, go back to the complex menu and go to C factor and type it in again. Give it a chance to show you all of the complex values. X uh, squared plus X plus one. Close it off. We're using complex version. We hit enter and look, we're we're down in our luck again. We get exactly the same thing again. Um, so we're thinking that the calculator isn't able to factor this guy. And so a lot of students will just give up. But it turns out that the calculator is, but let me show you what you have to do to pull pull the teeth, so to speak, to get it. Go ahead and enter your function and put a comma and then put an X. And this is really telling the calculator, go ahead and factor it, give me the complex roots in addition to the real roots. But let me just go ahead and show you the answer and then I'll explain what this comma X really does. So it's going to think for a second and this time it gives us an answer. It gives us x plus 0.543689. Uh, the next uh, factor is x um, minus 0.771845. And look, this is, an, this is a complex number because over here we have an i. So this entire second factor, this is the real part, this is the imaginary part. So this is a complex factor. And then we go on to the other one. We're going to get the conjugate pair of that one, which is looks like the same numbers but it's it's uh, they 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 occur they occur in, in conjugate pairs which means uh, plus and minus so here's the third guy uh, which is also imaginary so you might ask yourself why didn't it show us these imaginary or complex answers when we did it the first time up here and and it just goes back to how they program the calculator i mean i didn't program the thing but the way they they really set it up is that if you if you just give it a function like this it's going to try to show you roots that are are pure whole numbers basically something easy to write down or ra rational in other words something that can be represented like a fraction in other words the factors that we were seeing before were all nice whole numbers like x plus 2 and x minus 5. And we had, even when we did imaginary, it was like 2x plus i or, or 3 plus i or something like that. Something nice to write down. Those were all rational numbers. These guys here, these roots here, these are all really, you can't really see because the calculator truncates the decimal like this, but these are all basically ugly repeating decimals. Um, so in order to force it to show you all those repeating the, the the factors that all are involved with these decimals these irrational numbers so to speak you just need to put comma x in your function and that's basically going to tell the calculator okay go ahead and find the real factors find the complex factors and even if you can't display it as a whole number go ahead and do the the numeric you know math needed to converge and find the solution even if it's an ugly repeating decimal so really and truly if you wanted to avoid thinking about it you could always put comma x in all of these factor you know anytime you were trying to find a factor you could put comma x if you just didn't want to even have to think about it if you were always interested in that answer it's probably a good idea to do it so let me just show you real quick if you just use the regular old factor uh, function the very first one I did here in this section was x squared um, plus x minus six and before we closed it off if we hit enter right now we're going to get the proper factors which is x plus 2, x minus 3. But if you just wanted to get in the habit of hitting comma x here all the time, every single time that you, um, that you use one of these functions, then it's going to always give you the right answer. And in cases where it can't give it to you in terms of these whole numbers, if, if the factors are involving these long repeating decimals, then it's going to show you that as well. So really, to get the answer to these guys and get the total factorization every single time, you should use the complex factor function along with comma x and then you'll always get an answer for anything that's factorable. Um, if you do anything less than that then maybe you won't see the uh, irrational solutions, maybe you won't see the complex solutions. You have to think a little bit harder. So that's how the TI-89 is set up. It's a little bit complicated but really they're doing it to give you the power and the flexibility to do um, whatever it is you need to do. I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. Go ahead and uh, play around with this. Type in some of these uh, uh, polynomials in there. Try to get the answer. If it's not giving you an answer, do the complex version of the factor function. And if that still doesn't give you the full factorization, just put a comma x at the end and that should do it for you.